What's up Airsofters, this is Dawes46, you're watching Intrigue Airsoft, and today I wanted to uh, kind of talk about the Tri-Shot shotguns that we've all seen out there. This one in particular is made by uh, Double Eagle, it's kind of one of those lower end uh, knockoffs of the Kraft Apple Works Tokyo Marui M3 Super 90 Benelli's. This is a replica M4 Super 90 Benelli. Uh, you see a lot of heavy use from uh, the United States Marine Corps with this particular shotgun. Anyhow, I wanted to take a quick look at it, um, just kind of talk about some pros and cons on this thing. From my experience, this is my second tri-shot shotgun that is a replica um, M4 Super 90. I've had another one, and it was a different brand. The other one I had was, uh, I believe, uh, branded under UTG. This one's branded under Double Eagle. Um, they call it some god-awful rambling of numbers and letters. But uh, they all seem to be right on par with each other for the most part. All kind of cheaper quality, uh, aluminum outer barrels, plastic receivers, all of the uh, rubberized, texturized grips, pistol grip, pump, cheek weld, all that stuff, seem to be pretty much on par with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that <clears throat> for the most part there's only a couple different factors cranking these out. People are buying them, putting them in their own boxes, stamping their own brand name on it. We see that a lot in Airsoft and Obviously something cheap like this um, is not spared. You're going to see a lot of rebranding. The biggest con that I've always heard, and you know, a little bit from myself, I will complain as well, is that the pole on this um, adjustable cheek rest, adjustable stock, really nice. But one of my gripes about it is the pole on the um, on the pump is is pretty good. I mean, you got to put some force into it, man. Um, you know, for younger players, for shorter players, not necessarily uh, a strength issue, but um, length of arms. You know, if you're if you're a younger player, you're not very tall, you don't have very long arms. That could prove to be kind of a, a pain in the butt. I've never had an issue with it though, for a few different reasons. Um, number one, I'm built like a brick shit house. Uh, number two, I've never lost an arm wrestling competition. And number three, um, I'm just good like that. So let's get this over to the table. We'll find out what it's all about and see if I can help you, uh, you know, kind of guide you along if this is something that you've been interested in uh, in purchasing. So here we go, guys. This is the Double Eagle version, their tri shot shotgun. This is their version of the uh, M4 Super 90 from Benelli. It's a triple shot. They call it their M56DL multi shot shotgun pump action. Uses 6 millimeter BB bullet. So, you know, it's legit. There it is. Uh, you know, nothing too special about the box. It does tell you down here, uh, three barrels, three hop-up shots. Uh, each barrel does have a fixed hop-up. I believe that's made for um, the 20, uh, the .20 gram to the .25 gram. You might want to do some jacking around to see which one's going to benefit you the best. And they might differ depending on brand to brand. But uh, I find that point twenties do just fine in this. You're gonna be pushing about that 280 to 290 um, feet per second mark with point twenties in this thing. And keep in mind, you know, a lot of times uh, we're we're kind of used to this uh, higher FPS out of the box now, especially from these um these uh you know China clone type guns. But 280 290 uh, feet per second with three BBs at a time. That ain't bad, man. We'll take it. And that does come with a shell. It also comes with a speed loader and a cheap slang unjamming rod and a little allen key to adjust sight so whatever I'm not going to spend too much time on the box let's get into the gun here and here she is pretty lightweight little thing man um, you know nothing nothing too crazy uh, the the barrels here are aluminum it's a cheaper aluminum but uh, you know I guess it's better than plastic I would say it's thinner than the plastic that they use on um, you know, some of those plastic shotgun outer barrels. Rubberized texture on all the grips here. On the uh, the pump, the forward grip. Also on the uh, the pistol grip, which is really nice, really comfortable. And on the cheek weld there, little cheek spot. And then it's got a rubberized uh, butt pad on it. Really cool gun. While we're talking about that real quick, you know, pick yourself up a couple extra... Um, couple extra packs of shells here. Uh, you can pick these up for uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks. I think these were like $14 a pop. And uh, they are the 30, 30 round shells. Let me open this up real quick. Get some shells out. 30 round shells. So <clears throat> three BBs per pull of the trigger. That'll give you 10 shots per shell. Awesome. Comes in a uh, 
This one here comes in a pack of red and black. Now let it be known that um, as, as far as I can tell, some uh, companies that are selling like the Bravo brand, the UTG brand, and the Double Eagle brand, I don't see a difference either in shells or in the spring shotguns themselves. Uh, and even in some cases you'll see that all the brands are kind of pushed together so kind of backs my idea up that they are all the same the same thing just a different uh, stamp put on it. On the bottom of that uh, rubberized pistol grip there it's got a hole in it if you can pick up that there and that hole will snugly secure an extra shotgun shell there so if you uh, you know if you need to keep an extra right there on the pistol grip it kind of keeps a pressurized fit in there so you just use your thumbnail or you know pull it out it keeps it in there snug enough you know I wouldn't have too many concerns about it coming out I would keep an eye on it though it's not in there very very tight so you know if you know you're going into something and you know you're gonna need a second shotgun shell real quick going into a heavy firefight you know you got that spot right there so it's it's right there ready for you which is cool it's got that rear ring there front sight post down the way let me pull it in here sorry about that front sight post there is painted it's got kind of a sloppy red paint scheme to it can you guys pick that up so the front sight post does have a bit of red paint on it that's cool as well as some other red paint features they slop some red paint right here on the um, that trap door uh, button and what that trap door button is you pull back on that guy so you pull back on it pops that door open like so you need to get in there and dig out your old shell and that's ready to pop a new one in and you just kind of rock it down in there uh, squeeze it in push it down close that trap door and you're ready to rock with a fresh magazine shell with 30 BBs that'll give you 10 more shots again that pole is kind of a tighter pull you know you really gotta <clears throat> it does take a little bit of force nothing too serious <clears throat> but uh, it does take a little bit of effort a little bit of muscle to get that pulled back um, now it does have a, uh, a rail on top for optics the rails plastic that's kind of a letdown but you know, the, the weight of this thing overall anyways, you're not going to be mounting very heavy optics on it in the first place. So if you have kind of a cheaper optic, um, say for instance, like I do, a little, uh, little micro dot there with a plastic mount on it, that'll fit on real nice and it's not going to eat up that plastic rail. You know, plastic on plastic, good rule of thumb. You don't want to put metal on plastic, it's, it's going to eat it up quick. So really cool, man. Um, range on this thing, I would say honestly, you know, if, if you're looking to battle... Uh, in a woodland environment, outdoor environment with this thing, you're going to get outgunned, you're going to get outranged. In a CQB environment, <clears throat> that is where this bad boy is going to excel. So, say for instance you go to a CQB facility and they have the semi-auto indoor rule. Well, guess what? This is semi-auto and for each pull of that pump, you're getting three BBs. And most uh, CQB fields will accept that, will um, let you use that out there on the field. So, Plus it's kind of a lower FPS, so that's kind of how it fits under the radar and uh, kind of fills that loophole of the uh, semi-auto indoors. It's semi-auto, but it's shooting three BBs, lower FPS, so people kind of turn to, you know, turn a blind eye to it. So that's it, guys. Really good shotgun. You can pick these things up under any brand um, you know UTG Double Eagle Bravo uh, hell UK arms there's, there's there's so many out there and honestly I've, I've had a couple of these now this is my second one I really just think that it's the same manufacturer they're just slapping a different brand name on these things um, as we often see in airsoft pick this up for anywhere from uh, you know if you find a, a good deal on it, anywhere from 40 bucks all the way up to around 60 bucks I wouldn't pay more than 60 for it um, but I mean for 60 bucks it, it's still worth it so cool shotgun it looks the part it fills the part <clears throat> it doesn't weigh the part well and it fills the part I only say that you know when you're holding it <clears throat> in your hand we know that the uh, M4 Super 90 shotgun the real still version is a semi-automatic gas operated this is pump so on the real version you don't really pump it but on this one you do obviously this is spring powered and you got to pump it so you know whatever that's kind of the drawback of the the replica but 
really cool nonetheless man I'm really happy with it you know there's like the craft Apple works version of this the CAW and um, you know I think it I think the difference is is it does have kind of a that metal you know aluminum outer barrel and the receivers metal on this one it's plastic so whatever but that craft Apple works is like 140 200 bucks so for a fraction of it you know 40 to 60 bucks you can get something like this it's gonna shoot good it's pretty dependable um, the one I had previously before I traded it off to to a buddy of mine and he's still rocking it it's it's still alive uh, you know I I don't know, I used it in a good handful of skirmishes, plus playing around in the house, it's a Springer, why wouldn't you play around in the house, that's what Springers are good for, man.